What's up everyone? Today I'm once again super excited because I've discovered something new that I just have to tell you about in this vlog. As a software developer you might have a natural tendency to try out all the new frameworks coming out which is actually quite hard given all the JavaScript coming out like like in the last five years I don't know how many things came out but of course there are a few frameworks like Angular, React and then Vue um, that attract a lot of people and on the server side there are also are many great frameworks for Node.js that claim not really to be the best but to focus on something and do it in the best possible way and normally I'm not a big fan of jumping onto new stuff immediately, so that's why it took me quite some time to uh, give you the capacitor review that I gave you a few weeks ago. And this week I actually did it again. So I was planning my next course for the Ionic Academy. If you're not yet a member and want to learn Ionic, of course, make sure to check it out. And I wanted to present a full stack application with a server and the Ionic application. And for a server, I usually just pick Node.js because it is JavaScript and it is pretty easy to set up. And I use the Express framework, which is just like the plain basics that you need for a simple API. But for a long time I've uh, seen popping up Nest.js over and over again. I must admit that it looks really really great on the outside to me. So I broke all the rules I have normally not to jump into anything new and I gave it a try. And this is actually good news for you because now I can give you an honest first impression, first review of Nest.js which is really a promising framework. Actually wearing a green t-shirt in front of a green screen isn't a very smart idea, so I had to change and now we can do this. Let's start at the beginning. What is Nest.js? Nest is a progressive Node.js framework for building efficient, reliable and scalable server-side applications. Sounds great, and it definitely is, but it's not completely new. There are a lot of other uh, frameworks based on Node.js for server-side APIs in general, so it's not something completely new. But the approach and how it is structured is definitely new and unique to Nest, just like it is to all the other things as well. Um, before you think, okay, that's just a little thing, why is he telling us, let's look at who is using REST. We see a lot of companies, and if you're from Germany, you might know this. I don't know if they're also in other parts of Europe, Adidas, um, uh, big consulting uh, corporation. Um, actually, I don't know a lot about the others, but there are definitely many companies already using it, and it is just out since 2017, I think, and in the last year, Nest made a huge leap. So if we take a look at this article from, I don't know, end of last year, uh, we can first of all see that Express is, of course, because it is uh, the big player in the game since years, the biggest used framework followed by Koa.js and Sales.js, which are also great as well. But Nest.js comes already here with a pretty huge uh, market share, I would say. And the most interesting thing is now about the growth. So here we go, the GitHub star growth, if you take this as a serious indicator for how uh, great something is, look at how Nest.js is doing. This is like 280% growth in the last year uh, compared to the others. I don't know, this might stop at some point, but we're currently at 70k stars, uh, Express is at 40k I think around, uh, 44, yeah. So we will see how things go, but this is definitely, um, a very considerable framework if you're looking for something on the server side. So um, let's close the rest of this. Um, this was just the interesting part. So Nest, here we go. I've installed the Nest CLI, um, just one installation, introduction, getting started. As always, just like the Angular CLI and creating a new project is really just Nest new project. So then you are inside your new project and what might come to the eye first is that the structure here actually looks kind of like Angular. So um, I'm pretty sure most of you are following this channel because I create a lot of Ionic and Angular content. So all of this will look very, very familiar to you. And that's also a huge benefit why I actually picked um, Nest. 
So the basic app comes with an app module, or let's start with the main file. The main file bootstraps our application and waits on port 3000. Um, that was not English at all. I'm sorry for this. Um, let's say port 3k makes it a bit easier. So then you can go ahead npm run start dev, which will give you a live reload, of course. Then you go to your favorite API testing tool and hopefully, no, um, my URL is always configured to be 5k. So let's use this one. And there we go. Hello world immediately works. So that's not a big deal, of course. Let's see how this comes together. Because um, Nest has a lot of opinions already made up for you, especially about the architecture. So that is very interesting and very important. Um, it basically works with the modules you might know from Angular. So you can create your feature modules, let's say a news module, a users module. Within that module, you have a service. So that service um, takes care of returning the actual data, doing some transformation, making API calls, um, whatever you might think of. So here, the app service has a simple function, get hello, and returns hello world. What you see as well is Nest is completely using TypeScript. You can use vanilla JS, but they actually um, prefer to use TypeScript. And of course, I would encourage you to do so as well. The rest looks pretty much like an Angular. So in Angular, it would just be at Angular common, uh, injectable, uh, completely the same stuff. So then when we hit over to the app controller, we see a basic controller annotation, a class, a constructor, and our app service injected into the constructor. And then we have a get annotation, which marks this route as a simple get route. So that's all we need. We could also call this one, I don't know, test. Uh, let's save everything. And then we can access the standard route, but we could go to test. And there we go. So URL is actually replaced in my case to localhost 5000. Um, that's pretty cool of Postman actually. So with that in mind, we could also have a uh, decorator right here um, or in the controller, which marks the whole um, class to be under one domain. So test my route and then the route to our actual get hello would be uh, test slash my route. There we go. And there's the hello world now. So that's the basic idea. You create the controllers, um, you construct everything with a great architecture in modules. Um, you use the services. There's a lot of tools for uh, database access and everything else. But let me show you um, how something looked that I really just worked on this morning. Or this morning in this case means, I think Monday morning is today. Um, it contains already a bit more code, as you can see. Uh, let me close a few things. So in here, um, I created a lot of things. So I created a little seed for a Mongoose database um, with a seeder, a seeder that fills our database. Um, no problem to create this. Took me like five minutes to figure it out. And our app module, you see already Mongoose connection and the other modules also imported in here. And let's just look at the most basic of those, the news domain. So all of this will contain information about the news. Um, we register a news scheme. If you use um, like basic express, you might know how this works. You construct um, using Mongoose uh, definition for your database objects and then you simply register them in your module. What I not really liked that much was, look at this, I got this new schema, I got a news interface which looks pretty much the same and then I also got this create news a data transfer object. So this reminds me a bit about the Java Spring architecture um, and creating all of these objects and um, I'm not really a big fan of this, but I can see the benefit of it. So just for example, this defines how the body of a request should look when you want to create a new post. So if we look at this in our controller, we got a post to news, which should create, of course, a new news. And then we can say that the body should follow this data transfer object um, 
structure, I would say. And then you see again what we saw already in the easy example. We're using a service to make the database call inside the ad. Um, so here's the new service, injecting the news model and doing all of the um, database operations, find, find by ID, save, find by ID and remove. So all of this is pretty great structured with the services, the controllers. Um, I actually went a few steps further. I wanted to implement the JSON web token authentication, which guess what was pretty easy to do. Um, you can use guards like you're used to from Angular. You can even define a simple role-based authentication, which um, to my biggest surprise was really easy and done like in half an hour. And then you can secure your routes using guards, using roles. And all of this looks pretty great, I think. And I don't know if there's anything else I have to tell you about it. Um, it's just that it feels really natural as an Angular or JavaScript TypeScript developer to create applications with Nest.js. Um, I had a lot of fun actually diving into this and really I followed just the basic instructions and everything else just comes to you because if you have a general understanding about um, a bit of Node.js and Express and APIs and also about Angular and modules in general, Nest.js is definitely super easy to use. I really wanted to make this simple introduction not too long and again, of course, we already crossed the 10 minutes, so I don't know why I can't make it any shorter. So here's my short resume. Uh, Nest.js is a highly opinionated framework, so it makes a lot of assumptions about how things should be structured, especially in terms of architecture, which is one of their um, biggest key selling points. I don't know, it is free, so it's not really a selling point. You can definitely support the uh, creator of this great framework. This structure is not always bad, especially if you're a beginner looking for a great server framework. This structure that is enforced onto you gives you a lot of security in what you do. So you have to follow this pattern and your code will automatically be structured pretty well. Uh, others can read it and understand it. And also, um, I think with the current count of GitHub stars, Nest is definitely a solid competitor to the other available frameworks like Sail, Happy, uh, Express. So if you're into Angular, TypeScript in general and looking for a JavaScript framework that you can use on the server side, I would definitely encourage you to give Nest a try. It took me a morning to figure out a few things, but the result is um, pretty great so far. I'm definitely uh, hooked, I would say. I think I might actually do my future project backends with uh, Nest, simply because I really like the structure of the decorators and how things work and it's easy, understandable. Uh, you get the TypeScript benefits, the code compilation, great things, which can really power up the speed of your development. So I hope you enjoyed this vlog with a bit more of screen time again, a review of Nest Framework. I would love to know if you've used it before. Um, I actually haven't seen a lot of big examples, so I would really love to see your comments right below the video. Let me know how you like it, if you gave it a try, or if you are now giving it a try, then I would feel very, very happy. And also if you leave a like, and a subscription to this channel that would make my day perfect. This week go out, give Nest a try, npm install at nest slash CLI I think and then Nest new your great application. Let me know about it in the comments. I will catch you next week. Have a great week of Nest coding and as always happy coding. Simon.